Hello again. I'm sure that we are all aware that statues have been pulled down and removed in Britain, if they are merchants who have some connection with the slave trade, for example. This kind of carry-on began during the Black Lives Matter disturbances a few years ago. Hand in hand with this trend is the current idea of placing plaques near to statues which explain in detail some of the lesser known or perhaps more disgraceful facts about the subject of the statue. This uh, is known as retain and explain and is thought to be a convenient alternative to removing the statues entirely. Perhaps the uh, man that the statue is representing held shares, for example, in a company dealing in slaves, or was famous for holding right-wing views or something of that kind. It struck me the other day that the statue of Nelson Mandela standing in the shadow of the Houses of Parliament in London might benefit from such treatment. Mandela was, of course, a darling of the left wing while he was in prison for terrorism, and when he was released, he became a grandfather figure with his white hair and ready smile. Few people, though, ever apparently ask themselves why he was in prison in the first place. He spent nearly 30 years in prison, but nobody apparently cared why he was there. The answer is that Mandela was a communist who founded a terrorist group called Onkonto Wesiswe, the Spear of the Nation. According to the Truth and Reconciliation Commission, which looked into the actions of both the security forces and Onkonto Wesiswe, once the apartheid regime had ended, MK killed more civilians than they did members of the security forces. Most of the people killed by the organisation which Nelson Mandela set up in 1961 were black. After the founding of Onkonto Wesiswe, Mandela spent six months out of South Africa, chiefly in training camps in Morocco and Ethiopia. He spent his time on firing ranges and learning how to handle explosives. He was determined that the armed struggle was the only answer for black South Africans. He was arrested in 1962 and eventually convicted of sabotage, that is to say, bombing places. As soon as he was arrested, the terrorist attack stopped, which is a clue to his involvement in the planting of the bombs and so on. It is for this reason that even 20 years after he was released from prison, Mandela was still on the United States watch list as a terrorist. It may of course be argued that terrorism was justified in fighting against the white rulers of South Africa, and that's certainly a fair point. However, it's common to see Nelson Mandela mentioned as being the same kind of non-violent campaigner as Gandhi and Martin Luther King and this is how he's generally viewed by the public. Most children's books simply do not mention why Mandela was in prison. It's presented as simply a random act of spite on the part of the white government. Few people today in Britain are aware that this saint the old man actually carried a pistol and was very adept at making bombs and planting them. It might be no bad thing for some kind of plaque to be placed near the statue of Mandela in Parliament Square, simply setting his life and activities in some kind of context. After all, this kind of thing is all the rage these days. <laughs>